inverse, indirect proportion. In the second part of proportion, we will focus on indirect proportion. And we will concentrate on finding the equation of an indirect proportion calculation. But let's first start with a nice example. It's going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now I can start. M is inversely proportional, always underline that. So as soon as you see inversely proportional, you must think one over. Okay, so it's almost like the reciprocal of this to the square. So it means that there will be a square. Okay, so when P is 4, M is 5. Find M when P is 6. So as I said, I use the proportional sign, but it's almost like the reciprocal, so it's 1 over that square of that uh, brackets. Now, basically, I'm just going to substitute with an equal, and I'm going to put a K. So it's like because you multiply with K over 1, and then that just become K. Okay. And now I just substitute P is 4. Where is P? 4. M is 5. Okay. And I cross multiply, and I get my answer of 45. And don't forget, this was your equation, and this is now your your, um, your open equation. Okay, so you must find the value of k. But they don't stop and make it an a and a b. So basically, all they go on and say, find m when p is 6. So then in the place of p, I put a 6. And then I just work it out, and I get 1.8. So it's actually almost exactly the same as direct proportion. It's just that you start with a fraction, 1 over and whatever it's proportional to. Okay. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do number one. Let's just put number one there. And again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Create a little space and then I'm going to start. Okay, let's start with number one. Y is inversely proportional. To the square. So as soon as you see square, you think this. So it means that bracket must be square. Okay. So start with that statement by saying y, there's the proportional sign, inversely always 1 over. Okay. It's like the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be x plus 1 squared. And then in order to make it an equal sign, you put k over x Plus one. And now I can find the value of k by substituting this value. So in the place of y, I'm going to put that 0 0.875. And in the place of x, I'm going to put the 1. So it's 1 plus 1 squared. Now, usually I prefer already to put a bracket there. Okay, not okay. Uh, fraction, sorry. So this is going to be k, and remember this is 2 squared, so it's just going to be over 4. And then I cross multiply, and I get that the value of k is going to be 3.5. Okay, and then I'm just going to there substitute it back, so I'm going to say therefore y is equal to 3.5, and then it's going to be x plus 1 squared. That is my equation. Okay, very important. Now I'm going to start using it. So how do I do that? I'm just going to move up. And then I'm just going to substitute now 4. So y is equal to 3.5 and it's going to be 4 plus 1 squared and that so it's 3.5 and this is going to be 5 squared, so it's going to be 25. And I can simplify that and say y is equal to 0 0.14. And that is my final answer. And that's how you do number 1. Easy. Let's do, stop again the video, and do number 2. Okay, let's start with number 2. Z is inverse.
universally proportional, always underline. As soon as you see proportional, just make sure, is it direct or indirect? This is indirect. If it's indirect, you think one over. Okay. To the square. Now, again, it's a bit more difficult if they bring in the word there and don't put it there. But don't let you be, don't be catch up by, by doing the, um, just, just underline and just put it there that you remember that. So, say Z proportional to the square. Remember, inversely proportional. That's the proportional sign. And then it's Y minus 2. And now I'm just going to square it. Okay. Now remember, to make it an equal sign, I put a K or I multiply by K. Constant. Okay. Now I'm going to substitute. So in the place of Z, I put 9. In the place of, okay, I don't have K. In the place of X, okay, where is it now? In the place of Y, well, oh. Oh, okay. So um, I'm in the place of Z, I put 9. In the place of Y, I put 5. Sorry. So this is going to be 9 equals to K. This is going to be 3 squared, so it's going to be 9. Okay, so I cross multiply, so I get that K is equal to 81. And I'm going to say, therefore, Z is equal to 81 and y minus 2 squared. And that is going to be my answer. Why? Because they just said, find z in terms of y. Okay. They, they want you to stop there. They don't want you to use it. So, don't speed. Just stop. That is, that's the final answer. Okay. I want you to again stop the video. And I want you to do number 3. And again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Then you can just check if you are correct. It's just a nice self-confidence building. As if you can conquer it and get that feeling that you were able to do it on your own. Okay. It's, in, when doing mathematics, it's, all, it's a lot about confidence. It's how you, if you believe that you can do it. And that is just part of emphasizing that. Okay. Getting things on your own correct. Okay, let's start. Y is inversely, again, I didn't, inversely proportional to the square root. So I think already, and I can even put it there. Okay, square root of that. So, inversely, 1 over. Square root, always make sure. It's almost after you did it, just make sure that you did it correct. Otherwise, you lose this easy marks in a question like that. So make it equal, put it a K. Okay. Now we're going to substitute. So if we're going to substitute, so in the place of Y, we put 2. In the place of X, we put 8. So 2 is equal to K. Square root of 9 is 3. So put it over 1, cross multiply. And the value of k is 6. So go substitute it there. So therefore, y is equal to 6 over square root x plus 1. Okay. So that is going to be now my equation. But now I, I must go further in this one. Okay. So let's just go further. And now they say find the value of y when x is 99. So then y is equal to 6, and then I go 99 plus 1, that's nice. So it's going to be 100. I didn't have to put that in, I could have already just said 6 over 10. But end by doing is by this. So therefore, y is equal to 3 over. Simplify that one. And again, very nice and easy. Number 4 is a bit more challenging, especially the B part. So, I want you to try it, and I want you to try it on your own, um, and then if you get stuck, you can just check the video. It's a nice, it's a nice question. But definitely number B, I think, will be a level three, more challenging. Okay, let's start with number four. And I start with A. The force of attraction F newtons between two magnets is inversely proportional. Again, 
uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So square, don't forget, it's just square of the distance. So inversely, 1 over then the square of the distance. So f is equal to k over d. Okay, now I must find the value of k. So when d is 1.5, and I'm just going to substitute it there, and when uh, f is 48, so start with the 48, and then in the place of d, 1.5. So I will get 48. I'm just going to cross multiply. Very easy. Right. So this is over 1. So 1.5 times 1.5 times 4.8. I get that the value of k will be 108. Right, so, therefore, I substitute it there, f equals 108 over d squared. Okay, now that is, my, that is the answer of find an expression for f in terms of d. Finish. Now, I start with this nice number d. Now let's, let's read, because it's, it's all about understanding what the reading is saying to you. Let's read. When the distance between the two magnets is double, so the distance is double, the new force is n times the original force. Okay. Now, it's always, it's very important that you also understand the layout of questions. So, this number four, this is, it's almost like this part was for number A and B. But in A, it's actually like how, um, or let me rather put it like this. In B, the answer of A can help you in B. Okay, because it's all part of this question. It's not a separate question. Now, they talk about two forces. They talk about a new force and they talk about the original force. Then they talk about the word double. Now, what does the word double mean? Okay, now let's, let's just start by saying, and I'm going to do it like two ways. I'm going to say, uh, let's go to the original force, original force, force, and let's call this is the new force. Okay, so when the distance between is double, okay, so if this is in the, in the original, if it's one, now what is double one? It will be 2. But I want you also, let's take, take another one. I'm going to try it with 2. Let's take 3. If we double 3, then what do we get? 6. Okay. Now I'm going to test it, both of them. It's not necessary. You could have just worked with 1 and 2. But I want to test both so to show you I'm coming to the same answer. You could even, a nice one was to take 2 and 4. But just I decided just because of the 2s, I, I want to so go to 3 and 6. Okay. Or four and eight. But now, for now, let's start. I use this formula. Oh, sorry, I move a little bit. I wanted to underline. I use this formula. So let's start here. Let's say if, and then we say this is now for the original, and it's 108, and I put the one, and don't forget that it's square. Then I say if for the new force. And it's 108, and then I put the 2, and it's square. So this is uh, this answer is going to be 108. And this answer is going to be 27. Now, before I go, I was doing this. Before I go to the next row, let's just simplify this. You can say, divide 3, divide 3, uh, divide 3, divide 3, or press in your calculator, 27, ABC, 108. And you will get 1, 2, 4. Okay, I just simplify that ratio. But just because I want, and this is not necessary, I just show you. Let's take another one and see if we get the same ratio. So, if I say if, original, and it's 108, and it is in 3 square. Okay. And if I simplify that, I will get 12. And if I take F, new, and I say 108, and now I'm going to take 6 squared. 
power. This is 36. What do I divide 36 and I get 3? And if I simplify again, this is now easy. Divide 3, divide 3. So this is going to be very nice to see this one. But what, what do you notice? Do you notice that that is the same? So if I want to say, if I want to come to a conclusion, so I can say, if I, and I'm going to say, they want to see the new force as part of the original force. So I'm going to say it like this. So, and, and let me look, rather do it first before I say it like this, before I come to the sentence. I want to say, let's first, I'm just swapping the sides. New force, to the original. So just make sure this is the side for the new. Do you see? This is the new, the ends. So the new force was one. And what was the original for? Let me let just put it that you can see the quarter. Okay. So I can say so the new force is a quarter of the original force. Does it make sense to you? Because you could see that this 27, this, this, this 27, it was a quarter. If you say 108 and you take a quarter of 108, you get 27. If you take a quarter of 12, you get 3. Do you see? And that is why you can say, so therefore, because what was the question saying? Let's just go back to the question. So uh, they say it's double. The new force is n times the original force. Okay, so n. So with what, what am I I'm multiplying this 108 to get that 27? I multiply it with a quarter. Do you see? So work out. So it, it's, saying, it's saying to you this question, it's n times original. That is the new force. So the new force is n times the original. Now what do I multiply this 108? I must multiply that 108 with a quarter. Then I will get the 27. Do you see? With what must I multiply this 12 to get 3? A quarter times 12 is 3. So I can end this by saying work out the value of n. So, um, where am I? This is in this. Okay. So, um, so the new force is a quarter of the original force. So, therefore, N is equal to quarter. This was a bit challenging, but the nice thing is if you once saw a question like this, when you come across it again, then you know how to tackle a question like this. I want to end this video and I end it because I always reflect or go to the basics in my textbooks and the textbooks I just want to open for you here because, um, just to show you where can you find the textbooks if you want to buy your own copy you can buy it at the following bookshops and I even put the contact number so that you can phone and find out if you have stuff. Good luck!